Hey guys, it's the Mayhem. So this is going to be a new segment I'm starting. It's called Mayhem Back in the Day, where I pretty much share a story or an experience with you guys from my past. You guys can get to know me a little better. Um, so today's story is my experience working at Regal Cinemas. Uh, back in 2007, I actually got a job at a movie theater. This was my second job. Before that, I worked at another movie theater, a, sm a much smaller one. Uh, the first movie theater I worked at is called Carmike Cinemas. Uh, it's, it's a chain, national chain. Um, this particular movie theater had eight cinemas in it, so it wasn't a very big theater. Kind of a hole in the wall, really run down and dirty. It was built in the 80s, actually. And uh, something very interesting happened. Uh, I worked there for about a year. This is still Carmike, by the way. And uh, we got all this new equipment. We got all digital projectors. We were going to change the fucking game. Uh, the digital projectors were really hyped up. They were able to do 3D movies and stuff like that. It was it was going to be cool. And then all of a sudden, a representative from Full Sail University actually walks in and buys the property. Well, unbeknownst to me, I was at a high school football game, and I was actually in band at the time. And uh, I got a call, and they basically said, Hey, uh, Carmike closed. Uh, you guys no longer have a job. Um, you can come and help clean up the place, but that, that will be your last shift working for Carmike. And I was just like, wow, that kind of sucks. So less than a month later, I got a job at Regal um, with my credentials working at a movie theater before. This was not my first rodeo, so I got a job as an usher uh, at Regal Cinemas. Um, and this particular theater had 22 cinemas in it, which is... That was like more than double the amount that I was used to. So, um, but I pretty much, you know, I knew how to sweep popcorn and take out the trash. You know, I, I wasn't really, you know, I, it wasn't foreign territory for me. So I started there when I was a junior in high school and I stayed there until about 2010. Um, it was a fun job. I, I, I won't lie to you. It was, it was a fun job. I got to see a lot of people. I uh, got to see the premieres of a lot of cool movies, a lot of new movies that I wanted to see, and some that I didn't want to see, you know, like Twilight and stuff like that. One experience that I had was uh, when Harry Potter 3 came out, I believe it was 3, um, I had to work a 12-hour shift, and this was the first time I ever worked a 12-hour shift. So what happened with this was uh, I had to show up at 6 p.m., and we left at 6 a.m. Sorry, guys. And... Uh, because we had a three o'clock showing of Harry Potter. We sold out all, we had about 15 showings of Harry Potter and they all sold out all night. That was the craziest like thing I've ever seen. Now we saw busy movies before, but Harry Potter three, that was another, that was another level of just fan craziness. I've always been more of a Lord of the Rings kind of guy, but you know, I, I wasn't knocking Harry Potter. It just wasn't my thing. So I wasn't that excited for it. Um, but yeah, so we left when the we got there when the sun was going down, and we left when the sun was going up. It was pretty crazy. We went to Steak and Shake afterwards to just kind of chill, because we were all dead ass tired. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, we had I had a lot of good experiences there. Saw a lot of gross things. Saw a lot of disturbing things. There was this one time, this little girl was having a seizure in Speed Racer. And, I mean, I don't know how anybody can watch that movie without getting a seizure. It's so, like, bright and fucking colorful and shit. Um, but, yeah, I, I walked in, and uh, I saw this girl just seizing on the floor, and the, and the mom was just calmly ho holding her like she was used to it. And so we had to call medical. Uh, we had to call uh, somebody to come get her, uh, like an EMT or something like that, and that was pretty crazy. It was pretty scary. Um... But uh, I wanted to talk about more about how I was fired. This was around the time that The Green Hornet came out, the movie The Green Hornet. Um, so I had a really cool GM, and she actually went to work up in Tennessee for uh, corporate. So we got this new guy named Smith. I'm not going to call him Mr. Smith, but that's how everyone referred to him as Mr. Smith. And uh, he wanted to change how we did things. He wanted to reinvent the way we swept up popcorn and popped popcorn and, you know, and how we engage the customers and tear tickets and all that good stuff. He wanted to just revolutionize everything that we did. 
me and a lot of other dudes, we were set in our ways. We we're like, look, we're going to do things the easy way. We're only being paid minimum wage. We don't really care about you being the new GM, you know, that kind of thing. We didn't say that to him, but he knew that was our attitude. And he didn't like that. So he wanted to try and slowly get rid of us. And he did. He did one by one. And I was one of those people. How did he do this with me, you may ask? Well, all right. So it all started one day. I showed up to work. Um, and I didn't have a white shirt on. It's policy that you're supposed to have a white shirt um, under your polo. Well, the only thing I had clean was a cream-colored shirt. That's the only thing I had. Um, because all my other white shirts were dirty, and I didn't have time to do laundry. I was, you know, I was working, I was school full-time and going to work in the evenings, and, you know, I just didn't plan for that. So I, so I wore a cream-colored shirt. I showed up. GM normally my GM wouldn't have said anything but he was like look you can't come you can't even clock in with that shirt he made a big fucking deal about it he's like but I'll give you an opportunity to go downstairs and buy a shirt um, from Foot Locker or something I'm like all right whatever so I did that and you know he didn't he didn't uh, comment on that after that you know didn't really didn't really work or sorry he didn't really care that much so you know a few more weeks go by and then um, I actually, you know, and he would like pick on me and shit. He would like, I would get in trouble for the dumbest thing. Like uh, one time um, I didn't double walk a theater. Now, for those of you who don't know what a double or a theater walk is, a theater walk is basically when an usher walks into a movie theater with their flashlight and they count everyone in the theater. They'll walk like halfway up and count everybody. You're supposed to do that twice uh, per movie. Well, if you do the math, uh, there's 22 theaters. If you do them all twice, that's 44 times you have to walk in each theater. Um, so I had this habit where if the movie was barely, if there was barely anybody in there, I wouldn't walk in that theater. I would, or twice, I wouldn't do it twice. So apparently, uh, I walked into one of these theaters and, uh, he, the GM was sitting in there and he didn't bring this to my attention, you know, like he, you know, that night that I, you know, walked the theater, he didn't, you know, say that I was in trouble or anything like that. He, you know, he never told me, he never wrote me up, he never did any of that. Um, and he didn't write me up for the shirt incident, you know, so. And, and then one day, you know, I, I went to go see the Green Hornet, and I went to, into his office, and I was like, look, look, I, I feel like you're picking on me. I don't know if there's a problem but I feel like you're picking on me. And at this time, I had another job. So I was like, look, if you want me to leave, I will leave with no drama. Like, I I have another job. They're paying me a lot more, and, and I can get a lot more hours. The only reason I'm staying to work here because I like working here. But if you want me to go, I understand. You want to bring in your new people so you can brainwash the fuck out of them. I didn't say that, but that's what it was. He wanted to bring in young, impressionable kids who had never worked before to uh, kiss his ass and do whatever he says. But uh, he's like, oh, no, that's not what it is, Kyle. That's not what it is. It's just, you know, I, I have a way of doing things. And, yeah, he had a country accent. And uh, I'm just used to, I'm really old school. I, I do things by the book, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, you know, whatever. So a couple weeks later, I come into work, and I was about to clock in. And he's like, hey, before you clock in, come see me in my office. And then he brought to my attention, hey, you're on your third step. If you if you make one more mistake, we're going to have to terminate you or suspend you. And I'm like, so what are these write-ups for? He's like, the first one is for the shirt incident. I'm like, you didn't write me up then. He's like, oh, that was your warning. I'm like, you don't usually get written up for your first warning. Uh, that doesn't make any fucking sense. But anyways, whatever. So I'm like, what's the second one? He's like, well, uh, you didn't... Um, double walk a theater i'm like why was this not brought to my attention the night that it happened nobody warned me about it nobody reprimanded me for that and this was this was months ago like this th this didn't happen like a few days later this this was months ago and then okay so what's the third thing he said oh well one night you didn't ask if you can go on break and <laughs> even at carmike um i never had to ask a manager to go on break at Regal, I had never, in the three and a half years I'd worked there, 
I had never had to ask anyone to go on break. If you were scheduled to go on break, all you had to do was let your supervisor know, not your manager, your supervisor. And it was just understood that you were on break and nobody had an issue with it until me, until they wanted to just give me another fucking write up just because. So I had three fucking write ups, which means you're on your third step. And I told him, Smith, look, if you're going to, if you're going to fire me, if you're going to threaten me, then you might as well just give me another write up. Cause I'm not, I, I'm not going to kiss your ass. I'm not going to walk on eggshells to work here, especially this job is minimum wage. You have a lot of uh, other suckers that are going to do everything you say. I'm not going to do that shit. Keep in mind, this is when I was 20. I'm 28 now, so I'm a lot more patient with people than I was. I was a bit of a hothead back then. So, uh, he, so he gave me another write-up because I asked him for one. Made something up. And I pretty much wrote down in the comments, when they, when they write you up the fourth time, uh, they give you a... Uh, thing and you, you have uh, your last comments before you have to go off the premises and I basically said I basically wrote every rule that the managers had broken for example um, they let people into the movies for free yeah the managers did that and they are not authorized to do that only the GM and they have a certain amount of passes they're allowed to give uh, sometimes some of the other managers would let people into the theaters and that's against policy um, also, they were giving away free popcorn to people, to their friends and shit like that. That's also against the rules. They were eating in the office. That's also against the rules. Uh, what, what was something else they did? Um, there were times where we ran out of soap in the concession um, booth and they couldn't wash their hands. Um, not against the rules, but that's against sanitary regulations. Uh, there was something else. Oh, one of the bathrooms permanently smelled like urine because the ventilation was horrible in there. Uh, I wrote down and I made a laundry list of the problems and grievances that I kept quiet about when I was working there. Uh, there was a, <clears throat> what was it? Oh, there was people, um, I'm sorry guys, I'm drawing a blank. Oh yeah, the, the managers would um, trade favors for uh, free movies. So example, they would go downstairs. Um, this was in a mall, by the way. They would go downstairs and get free food in, in exchange for free movie tickets, which is against policy. So yeah, they were breaking a lot of fucking rules, but they wanna, they wanna cry foul because I wore a shirt that was off-white. I didn't double walk a theater that was fucking empty. And to be honest with you, I don't even think that he was in that theater. I think he just made that shit up just to give me another write up. And the uh, whole uh, not asking him to go on break, that's that's absolute bullshit. And he knew it was absolute bullshit because nobody fucking asked to go on break. Um, and the worst part about this, all the coworkers that I thought were my friends, they didn't stand up for me. They didn't, you know, say, hey, you know, Kyle's a good guy. Why are you firing him? Why are you writing him up? Nobody did that shit. All, all these people that I thought were my friends, people I've driven to the beach, people I've hung out with outside of work and drank with them and stuff like that. Nobody had my fucking back. And um, I was devastated. I was really heartbroken because I really liked working at this movie theater. It was a fun job. Uh, it was an escape from school. But, you know, and so I I got fired. And after I got fired, whenever whenever I'm wronged, I go down swinging. I don't, I don't just take it. I go down swinging. So what did I do? I went to HR and um, I actually told HR about all the grievances I had. And it was a lot longer than the list I gave you. There was like 10 more things and I'm not exaggerating. There was 10 more things and they were quite serious too. Uh, but you know, I told HR all these problems that I had and I could have gotten my job back, but I ended up cursing out a girl that I didn't really like that I was working with on uh, MySpace at the time. So yeah, that kind of sealed the deal. And then I called uh, the Better Business Bureau uh, and I informed them about the uh, bathroom that smelled permanently like urine. And uh, <laughs> yeah, and they had a field day with that. That was fucking awesome. Uh, and they did a follow up with me and they said, we looked into it. We took care of the situation. Thanks for letting us know. They kept my name anonymous. I'm like, oh, you don't, you guys don't have to keep my name anonymous. You can tell them it was me. I didn't tell them it was, uh, what you call it? A, uh, 
um, former, I was a former employee. I didn't tell the BBB that, but uh, it, it was pretty cool. It was a pretty cool thing. The, the thing is, the, the, the moral of the story is don't fuck with me. If you fuck with me, you're going to get fucked back and it's not going to be pretty. Uh, and I don't try to, I'm not trying to be a tough guy, but like, I don't like to be wronged. And I'm not going to take someone wronging me. I'm just simply not going to do it. I'm a very petty individual. And I will have the last laugh. And if I don't have the last laugh, I'm going to make you suffer for making me suffer. That's just the way I am. Uh, that's why I do well in the military, I guess. Uh, but I digress. So, so in uh, 2009, that's actually... No, I'm sorry. It was 2010 when I was fired. So it was like May 2010. That's when I stopped uh, working at the movie theater. And um, I was I was deeply saddened by that. And all the friends that I thought I had from there, they, they deleted me off Facebook and MySpace. And uh, I never heard from most of them again. And then slowly but surely, a lot of the people that I worked with that you know were there either longer than me or about as long as me, they were slowly fired and picked off. Um... Yeah, it was a pretty shitty situation. Um, but I had a better job and I was being paid like $4 more to work at this grocery store. And um, I actually ended up working there for about five and a half years. So, you know what? They they did me a favor by firing me. The, the, the GM was extremely petty and stupid. And um, he can fucking die for all I care. I don't, he, he, he's a fucking piece of shit. Um, but you know what? I still go to Regal occasionally. Regal is a really great movie theater. I tend to like, uh, Cinemark's Rave Cinemas better, though, because they have those reclining chairs and shit, but, you know, I'm rambling. I'm rambling, guys. So, uh, yeah, that was my experience working at Regal Cinemas. Do you like Regal Cinemas? Have you ever worked at a movie theater? Share your experiences below. This is The Mayhem. Thanks again for watching, guys. Peace the fuck out.